I just lifted the ice off the top. Thankfully it wasn't so frozen that uh, I totally have to dump it and replace it right this minute. Good morning guys. They were in their doghouse. They're nice and warm. Hey Donnie. Hey, pretty girl. Everybody so, seems to be doing good. Yeah. Here. You gonna sit out here long today? That way it's kind of brisk. Well Johnny's honor roll um, parent Oh, right. Recognition right. event. Johnny made straight A's last uh, semester, quarter, yeah, year. Whatever. Anyway, he's been doing good. It's in a few minutes, so it's going to save me. I now know what wind chill is all about. Uh huh. Hurry. <laughs> Please hurry. <laughs> I hurried. Good. Well, there's Gray. I was hoping she'd come over and visit, but she's in personal hygiene mode. I have to catch her this afternoon. So Don's um, office computer in there was only so good as yesterday as losing power for uh, a few minutes during the middle of a phone call. Right. We. I was on um, WebEx with um, uh, uh, luckily a customer that wasn't using a, a VPN or anything fancy. It was just a simple WebEx connected to the internet um, versus going through a VPN to a, a customer's intranet and then a WebEx, which is the other way. Anyway, the point is it's a simple configuration, but the lights blinked and I learned the, uh, relearned the lesson that we all knew. Uh, we get spoiled with laptops because they have a battery in them and the lights blink and you just carry on. Yeah. But on a desktop, the lights blink and your computer turns off. Right. Well, the good news yesterday was the internet didn't fall down. Right. Well, that's because it's on a UPS. It's on a UPS. So, so Don's adding a UPS to his corner over there so he won't yeah, have this. I'm down to scraping the bottom of the barrel of the duct tape uh, UPS, the one that isn't very pretty, but it works great. Right. He replaced the battery in it and it just didn't fit like the original battery. Right. 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 The, you know, the, the little standard little uh, 12 volt lead acid or uh, sealed lead acid um, that um, is cheap. The one that was special that would fit this, very expensive. So I just bought the less expensive one put a little duct tape on. I don't have to look at it so yeah, I'm biting fine. my lip I don't care. Well actually uh, in, in bottom line is, is I, that I, 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 I have the cover and maybe if, if this continues to work I'll buy the right battery and put it in here. Plus this battery is actually bigger than the one it was. Well if you didn't know if your UPS... Yeah, all I was going to say was um, you don't have to throw out your UPS if it goes bad. You right. can buy replacement batteries. You know Don and I try not to load the landfill up with stuff we That's can right. fix. And so Don has fixed a couple of these over the um, years over and it works years. great. That's, right. yes. That's all I was going to say. A new UPS is like 50 bucks. Or more. Yeah, well, they have come they down go, over yeah. what they used to you be. You but... catch them on f Black Fridays and sometimes get a good deal. Because I got that really nice one in there. It's like 1,200 volt, volt amps. It's a pretty powerful one, the one that runs the the closet. Yeah. Um, but these are this is 425, which is enough for this small sure, desktop. Sure, sure, sure. I've used one on my fish tank uh, motor because... Uh, the little propeller gets off balance um, when we have power flashes and then I have to stick my hand in the water, take it apart and put it back together and that puts me in a bad mood. So it's currently plugged into Johnny's computer UPS and that's, that's right. saving, saving me when this happens. It's noon and I'm back out here for my second trip today. Tux and uh, Gray are here on the platform. Wouldn't surprise me if Slate's in the hutch. Let's see. No, not right now, but she could be in the garage too. I'm sure she's fine. Let me see if Gray wants to come see me if I sit down over here. Since she didn't get any pets this morning other than a quick pat on the head when I put the food bowl down. As Tux and I walked the driveway, I did see one of the local hawks uh, fly away when he saw me. I've been hearing them a lot. Um, I sure would like to see some new greenery in that nest up there. I do see parts of last year's nest still up there. 
Normally they'll come back to the same nest and just make repairs. It's kind of in the shadow right now. And plus I'm not zoomed in because that makes the footage really shaky, but you get the gist. I wish they would go back to their old nest spot, but either one of these two will do where I can enjoy them this spring. So they really ought to get busy um, this week, next week with nest building because the eggs take a long time to hatch and the babies take a long time to leave the nest. Uh, they only have one uh, brood a year, so they need to get busy. Just like a dog, he stopped and rolled in some leaves. <laughs> You're messy. You're messy. He wipes his, rubs his whiskers on one side, goes back to the other side. This is like the third time he's done it. Back and forth, back and forth. It's warm on the wood here in the sun. These are the stairs off the driveway. I think he and I could be content here for several minutes. Hey buddy. Hi. Happy boy. Happy boy. I'm working on my Lego project and Panther is playing through the window with me. Hey buddy. It's a little after two and I'm gonna need to stop working on my project for now. Um, the interior of the candy shop because um, my back's hurting a little bit twisting from side to side. I'm having to pull lots of little parts uh, from lots of bins and up and down and back and forth and I can feel it just starting to bother me a little bit so I've got to stop. I don't really want to stop. I'd like to build this next case which is this um, but I'm going to. And uh, here you can see the stuff installed which is not going to affect me from putting in the um, rest of the floor when I get it. There's a couple pieces just stuck back here that go over here that are um, or actually goes here that is waiting. But um, this is pretty cool. There's some studs in the wall so that it looks like a dispensing unit. I thought that was neat. I love the little blender, how that looks. There are a few pieces of fruit coming that go on top there. They just get sort of dropped in or stuck on. This is the actual um, espresso machine. It, it's really well detailed and I'm enjoying, enjoying doing this. But I'll be doing the counter next. And then this PDF is weird. And then one more display case. And a couple of bar stools. And then uh, ice cream freezer. And um, probably ice cream toppings. So I've got one, two, three, four, five. And then bubble gum or cake. Six things to do, I think. And we'll be, we'll be good. So... Um, I'm going to guess that's tomorrow morning. That's one more day's worth of interior on this. And um, the pieces I need for these studs for the outside and for here in the front, um, maybe not enough to do everything. I've got them coming from two places, but the studs that are keeping me from going higher on the walls, they're, they're due tomorrow. So, um, and it's, they're, those are coming from Amazon, so I actually believe they'll get here. And uh, I can do a little more wall work here. I'm just, it's probably just as well I have two things going on at once. So when I'm hung up on one, I can work on the other. And hopefully I'm not hung up on both at the same time. I'm out in Ruby over here at South Park. I'm looking at the flag by the community center. And it's a straight line today as it was yesterday. It's just still really windy. Um, there's some people... Over at the basketball court, which, you know, is just, I'm at the splash pad here, and the basketball court is that way, and they're filming something. They got people out there that look like they're freezing, and the microphone up on a boom, and I don't know, it, I don't know what they're filming, but um, I saw one of the town employees, <laughs> he stopped to e empty the trash can, and he drives a truck my neighbor used to drive for the town. It's a very distinct older pickup truck and anyway I wanted to ask about my neighbor because I hadn't seen him in a while nice young kid emptying the trash and anyway they hollered move the truck out of the way of the filming because we were kind of behind so I did pull up Ruby to spin the stop for a minute so I guess there's a 
possibility she might be this red vehicle in the background, but they definitely didn't want the town truck in it. Anyway, my neighbor moved. I had suspected that, and um, he's out for a surgery, but expected back soon. So I told the nice young kid, I'll just be waving at you in the meantime, because I keep on thinking you're my neighbor, and besides, I like wave at everybody. So um, <laughs> I just thought that was kind of cute. I got inquiring minds have to know. I'm cu always curious. I just needed to ask but yeah he clued me in that they were filming something for the town but he wasn't sure exactly what they've been putting some pretty good stuff up on social media so i'm just waiting for them to put the basketball nets back up at the basketball hoops because they're still they're still down right now well this seems quite familiar <laughs> i believe that's one of the cng buses based on the location of the exhaust up high up there um I am headed to inline auto sales. Kyle, love hearing from Kyle. He called me yesterday afternoon and said that there is a very interesting older electric car. I don't know what's going on with the bus. <laughs> um, maybe got caught in the wind. It's very windy today. Um, very interesting electric um, car up here one back from 2013 2012 time frame like when the model s was coming out for the first time and um he asked me if i've had the time to go take a look at it uh, don if he was also available and um i said sure i've got time i'll go do that tomorrow i was really hoping that it would not be as windy as it is but we will make do we're not sure if it's um, charged up. The nice guy that I know over here, he's um, looking for uh, the key for me. So you can kind of see, it says Alpine. You can see the little screen there. It has the original manuals in here. So that's pretty cool. Gear selector down here. Oh, this is something you don't see in a Tesla. <laughs> a hand uh, emergency brake. Had a cigarette lighter at one time, like a real old school Our cigarette is, lighter. Uh, currently dead, unfortunately, but it is charging. It is charging. The charger over here, it's got the little green arrows going from side to side. One, three, one, three. So one would think with enough time it would uh, charge from up. Inside the Coda EV today because. There are like 30 mile an hour wind out there. You would not be able to hear me. The audio quality would not be good. Plus I'm in here by myself outside. I'd have my mask on and um, trust me, you want me talking from inside the car today. The first Coda Electric was sold in 2012, which of course is the same time that Tesla started selling the Model S. This car has a 31 kilowatt lithium ion iron phosphate battery you say that fast several times in a row <laughs> it had a range of 88 miles or 142 kilometers when it was brand new uh, that would be a combined fuel economy of about 73 miles per uh, gallon of gasoline or three not as good as today's electric vehicles but not bad for its time for sure um, it had a 6.6 .6 kilowatt onboard charger um, when plugged into a uh, 220 volt or level 2 uh, it would take about six hours to charge so it would charge overnight um, it had a three-year 36,000 mile limited warranty so not too bad and the battery was 10 years or 100,000 miles so let's see if it's from 2012 does that mean the battery is still under warranty because it only has, um, uh, it's not hardly any miles at all. I think like 30,000 considering how old it is. When this car was originally put on the market, it sold for $37,250. Y'all know in today's world, that means you go out and buy a Tesla Model 3 uh, Standard Range or Standard Range Plus. So very comparably priced. But remember, we're talking 2012 and EV technology was really new. Um, unfortunately, Coda filed for bankruptcy in May of 2013, and the remaining cars and parts and stuff were uh, sold as part of the bankruptcy uh, proceedings. Mullen Technologies bought the remaining assembly, uh, assembled cars, 
and um, Jack Ricard over at EVTV, he picked up some of the uh, remaining um, motors and equipment that they had for sale, some of which are still on sale today at their website. So, um, that again. Yeah. Okay. The UQM Power Phase 100 traction system had a 300 Nm peak torque. Uh, 100 kilowatt peak, 60 kilowatt continuous motor power, 150 ADC generator current output. Full power was 270 to 425 VDC. Max speed full performance was 7700 and it was liquid cooled. One of the things this car had that might surprise you is it did have a thermal management system on the battery. Um, as we know, the early Leafs did not. Also, I believe this car charged at a faster rate than the original leaf did so. today's standard the little screen is small i'm going to say this is seven inch or less uh, diagonal measurement um, it's labeled as an alpine um, system but it did have some uh, limited uh, navigation capabilities it came with cloth seats but you could order leather um, you could also add black finished alloy wheels metallic paint or upgrade the sound system I'm guessing that since this says Alpine, it's probably the upgraded system. And it did have pre-tensioned uh, seat belts, as well as anti-lock braking and electronic stability control. So, uh, you can see that the um, thing that looks like a gas can, it is really an EV charging station post over there on the left. And of course the speedometer and then on the right I guess it's telling you how hot or cold your battery is so pretty basic controls but of course this was originally an ice car converted to an EV so it would have controls you know that you would expect for for that for a nice vehicle just you know modified versus designed from the ground up electronic they're gonna give me a call, um, text me uh, if, when they get the car started. Maybe I'd come back one day next week um, and check it out. It does have all of the original manuals in the little case that the manuals came in. Oh, there's even one more up here. What one's this one? Quick reference guide, check. Scheduled maintenance, check. Warranties, check, and of course, the handy dandy owner's manual. I thought the antenna on the back was an add-on, but I see that it came with the car. Rob Mauer's on and you're awake today. I am. I am. Well, <laughs> well he, he's summarizing the conversation between Elon and Sandy from yesterday. He's put, putting the highlights and adding his commentary to it. And, and I think his insights are, are valid and, and uh, good to hear. Right. I had Don walk in the attic to help me put away the snowflakes and get down the hearts. Right. And I think that got his blood pumping a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I got a little workout today. You got me down to about six, seven Well, times. you couldn't run. Poor Don. He was ready to go run at 5.30. He asked A what time sunset right. was. I already knew he was in trouble. It was at 5.46 here or something. Yeah. And that's, he needs 45 minute yeah, window. I should, somehow I thought. So I we could. have a, a reminder set for 5 p.m. tomorrow. Right. He either leaves at 5 p.m. or it's too late. Too late. One of the two. That's so I tried right. to help him out there. She did good. But uh, what was it you just said about oh. uh, code or programming or come on, spit right. it out. <laughs> oh God, I'm gonna get myself in trouble. Um, with software, it follows the same methodology that no matter how many women you put on the job, it still takes nine months to have a baby. I'm a woman and that I don't find that offensive. Yeah, well. <laughs> so let's go with that. Yeah, right. And I've had two babies. Right. So it's the same thing with programming. Hiring more programmers generally doesn't speed it up. It, it can, but it's not a guarantee. Right, Rob was basically saying that Volkswagen was bragging about right. how many new programmers yeah, they got. Yeah. And aren't they the ones that shipped the wrong software on one yeah, of their yeah. cars that had to sit on a lot somewhere to wait for some programmers right. to try to figure oh, it out? Oh, it definitely ha helps to have the right resources, but at some point, it more just does it just slows it down. I mean, you, you start having to hire project managers, and that always causes a big problem with software engineers. I can tell you. You know, I just can't help but hear your conversations when I'm out here working on oh, my yeah. Lego products. And, you know, it's just the typical stuff. But today, 
Dot, right. I could tell Dot was I talking to a project, project manager, manager, and let's yeah. just leave it there. Yeah. Let's just. Leave. I thought he was super nice and diplomatic, and it's not what I wanted to say yeah. at all. And I, I was even like, I couldn't hear the other end, and I still knew. Right. It was sort of um yeah sort of interesting it so yeah. so today you had one conference call which turned into five how many are well, we going to have tomorrow well, i had one scheduled yesterday when i called it a day i only had one call today right on the calendar but by the time i got on this morning i had picked up three more and um one of them was a technical call which was the really long one which you know i'm working with the people f over in europe so we sort of kind of have to work in the mornings because right, it's right, late right. for them and early for me and um then um then the rest of the calls were um just project manager uh, three project management type calls so yeah you know with two different customers because i'm actually doing two, two contracts two contracts and so that means I get to do twice as many project management and status calls. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's right. But our favorite saying at IBM with the new managers when we would be training them on how to run support because we had worked in support for a long yeah. time and they hadn't a clue. Usually they were development managers yeah. in our case yeah. was you just get on the phone with the customer and tell them you have the right, right. the most, the, the best, best resources you have allocated to the problem. Oh. And every time they re-ask you, well, how many is that? And how many hours and all this other stuff? Oh, Let you. me assure you, I have my best, best resources right. allocated to the problem. And just keep repeating. Right. Say it a little different each time. Just yeah. repeat after me. Yeah. And of course, when Don and Pete and Rollin yeah, and yeah. maybe Dave Wright and a couple yeah. other people were working on your problem, you yeah. had the right, right people right. working that's on the right. problem. I would just go, yep, that's right, and walk away. Yeah. No, that's exactly right. <laughs> and then those of us that were supporting the support, we would like make sure everything else ran smooth so the right resources could actually focus on the problem. Exactly. <laughs> the good old days. Yeah, the good old days. See, Valentine's Day boxes, hearts. I got so far as the tablecloth. The dishes have got to be washed. They're in the dishwasher. They'll be on the table in the morning.